The gear page told me that changing tube makes a huge difference, just like Toadwin, and the gear page is never wrong. That is until you take their advice and put it to a scientific test, and then it all kind of falls apart now, doesn't it? How's it going? Welcome to episode number 279 of SMG Viewers Comments, my weekly show where I try and answer your comments and questions to the best of my ability. So if you've got a question you want answered about recording guitar stuff, whatever, just leave it below. I'll try and get back to you, especially if I think the larger community as a whole can be served by the answer. Anyway, it's Black Friday. That means we've got our annual Black Friday sale going on right now on Pro Mix Academy with all kinds of massive discounts on guitar lessons like Total Heavy Guitar, which is my course on recording amps, Guitar Tone Mastery uh, by Scott Elliott, which is his course on amp sims and impulse responses and all that cool stuff, The Ultimate Reaper Guide, all that kind of stuff. We're gonna have a few more words on that further down the show. Anyway, let's get to the questions. Coming to Guitar Center soon, Tone Fun after bankruptcy. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of the big hot topic, isn't it? Now, here's the thing. A lot of us knew that Guitar Center was gonna be looking at bankruptcy this year, and this is even before the lockdown. They were in deep shit. And I think the, the lockdown just kind of is, how the, I don't even, can't even pronounce that fucking word. Uh, made the problem worse, let's just put it that way. Uh, there was an existing problem, lockdown just kind of really put the screws to them. So I feel bad for a lot of the people working there, hopefully their jobs are going to survive. Now this is the thing, Guitar Center is not bankrupt yet, they filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. This is the exact same thing Gibson did a couple years ago. It basically says, hey, we need protection from our creditors so we don't fold the fucking company. So hopefully they can get that stuff figured out, get their debt settled and get their shit together. Cause I know there's a lot of good people who work there who need fucking jobs and I'd like to see them survive. I just hope upper management uh, can get everything sorted the way how they need to and get things back on track. So good luck to Guitar Center because I think it's a cool place, especially when you grew up in Canada, you don't have something like Guitar Center. I know a lot of people complain about it, but it's like, yeah, clearly you've never been to a Canadian music store before. Tubes make a small difference. If you can't hear it, that's fine. JJ12AX7s are a little warmer and muddier than other modern production tubes. EH12AX7s are a little brighter and more present sounding. Let's not judge tone whether or not the difference can be heard in a mix. Well, you know what? I'm a recording engineer, so it's kind of fucking important that we're able to tell what the tone sounds like in a fucking mix, you idiot. Fuck! Shut the fuck up, seriously. How fucking dumb are you? Oh, and the thing. Oh, JJs are a little warmer. These are a little brighter. No, that's total fucking bullshit. We put it to a test. We even null tested it. There's no frequency difference. Does this not fucking compute? Do I have to fucking beat you over the head with this before you finally fucking understand? Tubes don't change the frequency balance of your fucking amp, dumbass. I hope I got my point across. Guitar players, I don't use the tone dial on my guitar. Also guitar players, this valve I bought gives me a 0.3 dB boost to the mids and that changes everything. <sighs> Mr. Pliskin, sadly, I think you are absolutely correct on that matter. You people must be deaf because I can tell the difference between a guitar that has gloss and satin finish. The total differences are quite obvious. And it's quite obvious, John Bilson, that you're talking out of your ass. I'm amazed by how big of a difference putting the same speaker in a different cabinet can make. For people that use a virtual answer, is there any way to replicate this change digitally? Thanks. Yes, go over to Lancaster Audio and grab the WGS impulse pack because they put five, six different speakers into a whole bunch of different cabinets like Laney, Marshall, Mesa, PV. And yes, there are massive tone differences from cabinet to cabinet to cabinet. That's because the, they use different plywood. Like a Mesa cab is gonna use like three quarter inch ply and then an angle cab is gonna use like one inch ply from, from the Balt or from Siberia. A lot of people use Baltic birch, uh, Angle uses Siberian birch and there is a difference in the sound of those cabinets. How much of it is actually the wood and how much of it's the, the metal grill cloth, I can't say for certain, but those cabinets definitely are very different beasts. That's for sure. Definitely worth checking out. And yes, just try out some different impulses because a lot of different cabinet makers all use vintage 30s because apparently everybody in metal no longer has any imagination. Can't imagine recording with anything other than a fucking vintage 30. The suggestions here are valid. There aren't any magic tubes, just a variance in gain from one to another. As a tube amp builder, I know I can make a happy amp a bit angrier or an angry amp a bit happier with a tube swap, but it's not dramatic. Thank you very much, sir, for bringing some reason to this debate. Yeah, that's the thing. You're not going to get a frequency shift. That has been debunked especially when we started doing null tests. That's what I noticed with my test, you get a difference in amplitude, not frequency. And that's, again, once again, it's a very, very subtle change. Even if you go from a 12AX7 to an AT7 to an AU7, they're all just gonna be a little bit louder or a little bit quieter. What you wanna be looking for in a tube is longevity, and that is all. Glad. 
Ben, question. If a recording is really kicking but something is slightly out of tune, what do you do? Let it go or stop the take and fix it? Depends on how great it is and how badly out of tune the guitar is. I've thrown in an entire album's worth of quad-tracked rhythm guitars uh, because they were out of tune with each other. Um, big shocker, we recorded it with a Gibson. And we replaced it with a Schecter with some Grover locking rotomatics and rocked the whole album out in about four hours. So we wound up getting a better take with the better tuned guitars. So you might even get that effect. Pretty fucking rare, but when it happens, it's kind of awesome, actually. So never be afraid to step in and say, hey, we can do this better. Maybe let the take go, then tune the guitar and try it. Hey, can we do it this time? But maybe try tuning the guitar. Usually when you challenge a guitar player with that, they, they kind of rise to the occasion, I find. All right, everybody, it is time once again for the Black Friday sale at Pro Mix Academy. It only comes up once a year. We got all kinds of custom bundles and stuff. There's the Killer Guitar Tones bundle, which is Total Heavy Guitar and Guitar Tone Mastery. We've also got something new for this Black Friday, and that is the Metal Production Bundle. And you get uh, Understanding Audio Essentials with Adam Steele, mixing Extreme Metal uh, with Chernobyl Studios, mixing Metal and Reaper with three plugins. That's one of mine. Uh, the Ultimate Guide to Reaper, Guitar Tone Mastery, Total Heavy Guitar, Mixing Symphonic Folk Metal, Mixing Math Rock, Producing Prog Metal. That's all for $197. That's 75% off this $788 sticker price. So that's only going to be around for a couple more days. Grab it while you can because this sale ends Sunday night at midnight. It's not going to be around for much longer. Uh, you can also do custom bundles if you there's a couple courses you want to get. You can make up your own. And of course, there's the Everything Bundle and the Ultimate Rock Mixing Bundle too. Hold the phone. Sorry, guys. I got to break in here. This just came to my attention today. This is like the day before this goes to air. So I'm just making sure I got this clip in here. Um, all the courses in the Metal Bundle are are actually also included in the Ultimate Rock Mixing Bundle for the exact same price for $197, except with the Ultimate Rock Mixing Bundle, you get 23 courses, including the Motorhead lesson, the Galacticon lesson. There's a, a, another one with Ulrich Wilde in there. There's the Bob Marlette stuff. The Jordan Valeriat lessons are in there, as well as Total Heavy Guitar, Guitar Tone Mastery. Uh, David nazi has got all this stuff in there as well. Once again, it's only $197, and it's only going to be around for this Black Friday sale. Clock's ticking. Can get in on it while you can. Links are in the description below. And the added bonus this year we're throwing in is if you get yourself a Pro Mix Academy course, you're going to get access to my premium Discord where I'm going to be hanging out weekly and giving you feedback on your mixes uh, personally. So grab yourself a course. I hope to see you in the Discord. Follow the links in the description below. Now back to the show. Well, you got your video out of it, so that's something, I guess. I hope you get paid well from this video as you unfairly make a decent piece of hardware look like garbage on purpose, affecting the sales of Clark Technic brand just for some content. Congrats. Okay, dude, let me spell this out for you because obviously you're too fucking dense to get the whole point of the show, and that's consumer advocacy for people who work fucking hard for their money. I don't want to see them thrown away on a complete and total piece of shit like the Clark Technic 2BQ. Is that too difficult to fucking understand? Emulating analog gear, especially expensive high-end analog gear, with other analog gear using shitty components usually doesn't work out so well. That's why so many people do digital versions, because you can do it that way. That's why plugins emulating the original Poltec sounds so good, and the Clark Technic sounds like total fucking dog shit, especially when you compare it against the original thing. This is the thing. It is not a decent piece of gear. It's not even remotely close to being anything I'd call fucking good. It's fucking awful. Don't waste your fucking money on it. Is it really that hard to understand? Look, this is what I do with this show. I call out bad fucking gear. That's why I gave Line 6 such a hard time for so many years, is because their entry-level stuff was total fucking dog shit. You know what they did? They stepped the fuck up because the Pod Go, which is their entry level now, is actually not fucking bad at all. It's pretty good because they fucking listened to the criticism. Even Mesa with their fucking original cab clone. Complete and pe total piece of dog shit. The cab clone, too, has a serious ground shielding issue, but it does sound infinitely better than the original cab clone. Why? Because they listen to the fucking criticism. If everybody just sits around and kisses Clark Technic's ass and say, oh, this thing's great. No, it's fucking not. It's fucking terrible. It's an atrocity and nobody should be wasting their fucking money on it. And if anybody's out there telling you, oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. They're fucking lying or deaf. Kipper fanatics remind me of Jehovah's Witnesses. All right. Now, before I get myself in trouble here, I'm going to say this. I don't have anything against Jehovah's Witnesses personally or anything like that. I don't want to seem like I'm singling out any one religious group. Believe me, if you're a follower of any kind of religion, I think they're all equally fucking worthless. So don't waste your fucking time with them. 
There, that's my piece. Uh, the only people I've ever had to throw off my porch for religion do fall either Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons as well. I've told them to get the fuck off my porch too. No, everybody else has been pretty much smart enough to stay the fuck off my porch. Now, I've never had a Kemper fanatic show up on my porch, but uh, judging by the last message I got, sounds like I might get some of the Clark Technic fans instead. My man got offered the chance to open for Trapped a couple weeks ago. We turned it down very quickly. Definitely do not want to be associated with them. Oh, man, you could have had some fun with that show. You could have been like, do, do your set and then, hey, make sure you stick around for this band of fucking morons called Trapped. Something like that. I don't know. Now, here's the thing. I don't know what Chris Taylor Brown was posting on Facebook that got his channel banned. Apparently, it was hate speech. The question is, really? Does the world need to be protected from Trapped? Was he really saying something that fucking awful they needed to ban the guy? I am a proponent for free expression, and sometimes we need to say unpleasant things. I get it. Chris Taylor Brown says some very unpleasant things that I do not personally agree with, but I don't need Facebook coming in, stepping in and saying, we're going to protect the world from that. That just seems like overreach, in my opinion. Was it really that fucking awful? Does anybody have some have some screenshots or something? Or can they quote something that he said? Like, clue me in here. What did he say that was so fucking terrible? Was it just bad politics? Or was he advocating for genocide or something horrible like that? I'm really curious. Again, we do need the ability to say unpleasant things. That's how we get a dialogue going and hopefully can, can learn from it. When somebody says something truly horrendous or truly stupid, I like the, the ability to be able to call that person out. Personally, it's like, hey, Chris Taylor Brown from Trapped, I find what you said to be incredibly revolting and fucking stupid. I've lost all respect for you. See, we can do that. But he hasn't lost his ability to say what's on his mind as he should be able to. As long as he's not advocating for the murder of people, I really don't have a problem with it. It goes back to the old adage of yelling fire at a crowded theater. As long as he's not doing something incredibly fucking stupid like that, that's fine. If he's just being unpleasant, let him be unpleasant. Then we can all make fun of him. That green solar in the thumbnail. Ola told me when we were hanging out in Asia that he told the factory to use the same finish as on my KM7 standard. That green solar is KM toxic smoke green. You know what else? I don't even care. LOL. Hey, everybody. It's Keith Merrow from the Keith Merrow Show. Keith, love you, buddy. Yeah, you're a true credit to your craft, good sir. And by the way, if you want to send me a toxic smoke green KM7 standard uh, to demo on the show, ooh, oh, that would be really rough. Anyway, Keith, uh, love hearing from you, man. Feel free to comment. You're always welcome here. And uh, everybody, if you haven't subscribed to Keith's channel, please do. He is just absolutely fucking amazing. Genuine question. I remember years back when control surfaces were all the rage. What's the story with them? Have they gone the way of the Dota? Well, I bought a Mackie control surface there back in 2001 when I was on Cakewalk. And when I switched over to Saw Studio, it worked even better in Saw Studio. But the thing was, Saw Studio's custom interface with the mouse and keyboard was so great, I found myself not really needing to use a control surface anymore. It just became a very expensive paperweight, so I sold it. I don't know what you guys are using. Do you prefer faders to use mouse and keyboard? I got a sneaky suspicion most of you guys are working with a mouse and keyboard. I don't know. I really don't see the point in getting a super expensive control surface. But, you know, 20 years ago, I said I wanted to see some, some kind of a control system set up in virtual reality. And I just got myself an Oculus Quest 2. So I can do a little flight sims with it, that kind of stuff. Playing the X-Wing game, I lasted 15 minutes before I wanted to puke, but you know, I think it'd be cool to be able to throw on a VR helmet and then just grab virtual faders and have access to everything and just be able to move stuff. I think the the interface and the technology needs to mature a little bit more before we see that because you know the little stick and thumb things we have right now aren't quite as accurate. Now we're gonna need something that's gonna be like gloves, which will give us tactile feedback. We're gonna actually feel like we're grabbing surfaces and moving crap and turning knobs and that kind of shit. That's what I want to see. That might be another 10 or 20 years before we get that part, but hopefully we're going to get there at some point. What do you guys think? I want to hear from you. Would you ever use a Joyo Bantam or another micro amp on a recording? Also, since you're only mic one speaker on a cap for recording, what's the advantage of having a 4x12 for recording? Yes, I would definitely use a Joyo Bantam. Maybe blend it with a tube, full tube amp, like uh, a Rev or this wonderful Soldano, something like that, and get some kind of an interesting grind going on. I mean, Clayman sounded so great because it was an angle amp mixed with a valve state and the valve state gave it that grind. So yeah, don't be afraid to experiment. I've definitely mic'd more than one speaker on a four by 12 at a time as well. Um, even if you've got the same speaker in a four by 12, all four of them are going to sound slightly different from each other. That is a fact you can even see in one of my very first videos, how to record heavy guitar, where I show you the variances all on the same type of speaker in a four by 12. So you've got four chances to get an awesome tone and get something really great. The other video you should check out is Greatest guitar tone trick I ever learned. Um, I stole this from Ulrich Wilde, who recorded Pantera and Deftones and White Tommy and a whole bunch of bands. That's where you take like a 57 on one speaker and a Tom mic like a 421 or a DTP 440 and blend them on a really shitty Behringer mixer because they sound really good for metal guitar. 
and you can do that for dirt cheap and get an absolutely awesome tone. Dimebag came up with that idea. Actually, he used a Mackie board, but works just as well on a really cheap Behringer as it does work. You definitely don't have to drop a lot of money on preamps to get a great metal guitar sound. That's for sure. And if anybody tells you otherwise, they're completely full of shit. Hey, Glenn, did you hear the bad news? Detroit Area 89X radio station switched over to country. Uh, yes, I did hear the news, and let me clarify. When the guy's saying Detroit Area, what he means is Windsor Station 89X. It's a Canadian radio station, and like most Canadian radio stations, they're pretty terrible because by law, they have to play 33% Canadian content. And um, it's really hilarious when you go up to Toronto and you hear some of these uh, classic rock stations uh, that have to play 33%. It's hysterical because you get Rush and then you get all these bands that nobody's ever heard of, like Gato. Like, who the fuck are they? Seriously, it's pretty fucking hysterical. The thing about 89X is I, I was never really a fan because they were like alternative rock. So I wasn't big into alternative, but my good friend Mark McKenzie was like one of the top DJs there and he's now out of a job. So I'd just like to say to the corporate overlords who switched from a rock station to country music, fuck you, uh, you guys fucking suck. I hope you lose all your sponsors and your station crashes and burns because you'll fucking deserve it. Seriously, fuck every last one of you. You can't go off the air soon enough. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. Once again, the Black Friday sale is a go on Pro Mix Academy. Don't miss out on these once a year deals, including the Everything Bundle, the Ultimate Rock Mixing Bundle, the Metal Bundle, the Killer Guitar Tones Bundle. It's all gonna be on sale and the sale ends Sunday night. Get the deals while you can. See you next time.